Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Ton 618, a quasar that seems to have the most massive black hole we have ever discovered in the middle of it. Let's discuss this a little bit more and simulate this using Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Math. So we're actually flying uh, toward this black hole right now and we're going to be going right in the middle of it at a distance of approximately 10.4 billion light years away. Which also implies that this happened, or the light that we've seen from it, is about 10.4 billion years old. Now we're going to be actually not just uh, looking at it, but we're going to try to place it right in the middle of our solar system and also very close to the sun just to see how it influences both the planets and the stars near us. So uh, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be basically taking a look at a tremendously, tremendously massive black hole that's known as Ton 618. Now we've actually discovered this black hole really, really, really long time ago. As a matter of fact, uh, this was first seen back in 1970, and actually back then we didn't really still understand uh, black holes or quasars very well, but it took many many years for us to actually figure out that what we were seeing was essentially a galaxy whose black hole is so massive that it's producing so much light uh, and it's pointing that light toward us that we are seeing it from a really, 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 really far away distance. And so let's actually go to our own solar system right now and basically try to imagine how big and how tremendously massive this black hole is. So you can see Earth is right there, Sun is right here. And if I were to place our own Sagittarius A star, which is the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, this is what it would actually look like. And uh, we're going to basically go into the black holes and place Sagittarius A star maybe right here next to Earth. So you can kind of see that's what Sagittarius A star looks like. And it's approximately 4.3 million masses of our own Sun. And if I were to just let go of the pause button right now, things would pretty much fall apart pretty quickly. Earth is already absorbed by the black hole, the sun will not really last very long, and the rest of the planets will be absorbed and turn into energy that's going to be released into some other faraway galaxy, similar to um, a faraway quasar that we're talking about today. So that's Sagittarius A star. Now, the black hole that we're talking about that was actually very recently studied, or I guess studied again, and only a few months ago we've actually been able to finally calculate relatively precisely its actual mass, um, is essentially now known as the most massive black hole. So let's go to the solar system one more time, and I'm going to show you how ridiculous this black hole is. So its mass is 66 billion masses of sun. That's essentially 15,000 times more than Sagittarius A star. I'm going to have to actually move away from our sun a little bit just so I can even place it somewhere where it doesn't actually destroy everything right away. We're going to go maybe at a distance of um, a few thousand astronomical units away from our solar system. So maybe somewhere right around here. I think this is probably a good location. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually change the parameters uh, to be more realistic. And you'll see that its size automatically changes right away because this game actually uses a lot of uh, quite realistic physics formulas. And in this case, it um, calculates the uh, Schwarzschild radius very accurately. In other words, the radius where basically you reach the point where no light can escape anywhere. In this case, this radius is just over 1300 astronomical units. Um, and this implies that this is basically the size of uh, our solar system. So here, if I were to compare this to, let's say, the size of our own uh, planet Earth, you would see that planet Earth is ridiculously tiny. It's almost impossible to see. Even our own sun would be actually impossible to see at this point. 
And, uh, well, guess what's going to happen to our solar system if I once again let go of the pause button? So, pretty much everything is going to start accelerating quite dramatically, and you can see the speed actually increases really fast, toward uh, Ton 618. Now, this black hole is so massive and so large that uh, some people don't actually think it might even theoretically exist. Uh, some of the recent papers actually estimated, uh, we think maybe 50 billion uh, masses of sun is the theoretical limit before the actual black hole starts falling apart into smaller pieces and create um, essentially other black holes or possibly even stellar uh, remnants. But as of now, it seems that we can't really explain this any other way. The uh, amount of light that this quasar produces, if you look at it from a distance, is essentially so, so dramatically high that the only explanation is that whatever is inside that uh, galaxy far, far away is about 66 billion masses of our sun. So, okay, we're going to accelerate this a little bit just to see how long it takes for all of the objects to get this far. And let's actually maybe even take a look at our own solar system just to see what's happening there. So we are basically flying toward Ton 618. Oh, yeah, it looks like everything is flying toward it ridiculously fast. As a matter of fact, you can see everything is kind of being unofficially spaghettified. As in everything is being stretched and pulled at uh, tremendously, tremendously uh, powerfully to the point where things are moving away from each other at different um, velocities and different accelerations. So things are about to start colliding with the supermassive black hole here. So we're going to decelerate time just a little bit and see what happens. My guess is that everything just going to get absorbed. Yep, there we go. Everything's gone now. It didn't take very long, uh, just a few months for things to reach this particular point. Um, but you can see that uh, the just the sheer size of this object means that if I were to place it right in the middle of our solar system, or in other words, if I were to change our sun into the size of this uh, supermassive black hole, it would essentially look something like this. So here we go, I'm going to press enter and boom, everything just gets swallowed and it's ridiculously large. Um, its size compared to everything else in our solar system would be approximately, so let me just take a simple object here. Let's take our Earth actually and measure the distance. So we're going to go uh, away from the sun at a distance of about 1300 AU which is somewhere right here. So that is how ridiculously large this black hole is. Uh, so about this this big. That's, that's basically probably one of the biggest objects that we've discovered that's essentially a single piece of mass that um, used to be something else probably. Now, I also wanted to see what would happen if we actually went ahead and placed um, this particular black hole somewhere in between stars. So like, let's just say we place it between our Sun and Alpha Centauri. And this particular simulation actually shows you a relatively realistic representation of the nearby stellar systems. So here you can find all of the closest star to, uh, stars to us, including Sirius, Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, and so on. So let's just uh, take the black hole again and place it right there in between stars at a distance of about two light years away from our sun. We're going to let this go and you'll see that within a few days, our sun will actually acquire a ridiculously high speed. It's already moving toward this black hole at close to 20 kilometers per second. Now let's see what happens within the next few months or maybe within a year. A year later, the sun is moving toward the star at 1000 kilometers per second. And basically, it will only take it a few years to get to this object. So this black hole is pulling everything so uh, with such a high acceleration and uh, with so much power that uh, basically the entire system here will get, um, well, first of all, kind of destroyed because stars will actually start behaving very differently. And you'll also notice something else happening very soon. It's very likely that it won't take very long before we start seeing the first supernova occurring because some of these stars will start colliding with each other because they're all moving toward the same black hole and at some point they'll actually just approach each other a little bit too close. 
Now, let's see how many years it takes before our sun falls into the black hole. And here we go. It's actually moving toward the black hole very fast now. Uh, 50,000 kilometers per second. So basically, we're starting to feel relativistic effects at this point. And it only took about 38 years for the sun to move, uh, I guess, about three light years to uh, the location where Ton 618 was placed. And here we go. It's just going to probably get absorbed again. But in reality, what would happen is that the black hole would now actually acquire a tremendously large um, accretion field around it or accretion disk. And a lot of the material would actually fall very close to the black hole and get spewed out as a kind of a projection from both sides, uh, from the side up and down of the black hole. And this would actually create a tremendously powerful beam of light that would then be visible from really, really far away. So there come the supernova. Uh, the stars started colliding with each other already. And basically, most of these stars will either collide with each other and create a lot of energy. But at some point, pretty much everything here will actually fall inside the black hole. So this is how tremendously powerful and how tremendously large this black hole is. Now, we will definitely not really see any other supermassive black holes uh, of comparable comparable size anytime soon, mostly because we don't actually even know if this is real yet. We think it's there and we think it's kind of possible, but the theory behind the black hole mass limit tells us that maybe just maybe it's either several black holes or something else entirely that's causing uh, this galaxy, this quasar, to produce so much energy. Now, if you don't really know what a quasar is, do check out some of the previous videos I've made where I explained the principle of quasars, blazars, and other similar objects, also known as active galactic nuclei. And also do check out some of the other videos about black holes. And this particular video, that's actually what, all I wanted to show you. And uh, if you do have any other suggestions on what we can do with these black holes, do post them in the comments below. Anyway, hopefully in the next few years we'll discover more about this particular black hole and find out what's actually hiding in this quasar known as Ton 618. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.